Uh, so as you may have noticed, we've been having some issues. You know the difference between hardware and software? The hardware is the piece that you can kick. And that's the kind of where we are at. But while we wait for uh, the kicking to achieve some sort of result, I'd like to introduce uh, my colleague, Marcus Sagan. He's a, a lead product manager in charge of Atlas Search. You saw a preview of Search during the keynote. Uh, and Marcus is here to uh, show you a little bit more if we can get things working. But in the meantime, if anyone has some questions uh, based on what we already saw, what you know, any questions that led you to sign up for this session in particular, maybe we'll do this in kind of reverse order and start taking those questions first, especially because we are the one thing that stands between you and lunch, and we don't want to interfere with that. Uh, so Marcus, do you want to come up and we'll see if the, the nice ladies and gentlemen have any questions for us? You just raise raise your hand uh, should be a microphone um i'll make sure that that's coming into the room actually but what's your room okay. what's your question yeah i'll get the mic can we get the microphone in here They don't, they don't love our room. They're just rolling with the changes here. You got the microphone? Okay. It's coming. This gentleman had a question. And meanwhile, anyone who's on the stream, I don't know if the stream is even live, actually, uh, but uh, anyone also in the room, you can also submit questions through the app, and I will relay them on to Marcus. Great. Okay. Oh, I guess you hear me, right? So essentially, what's the difference between the Atlas search and you know regular indexing a collection, having yeah, like bucketing pattern on top of it, and things like that? You can actually do the same thing probably with indexing. So yeah, uh, how does this thing solves those? So that, this, this is a great question. Uh, it really comes down to uh, a few fundamental differences. One of those fundamental differences. So it's a great question. It comes down to two fundamental differences. One of those fundamental differences is term indexing. Uh, term indexes in Lucene allow you to create a lot more index, a lot, a lot more fields that are indexed, and then you can run filter operations on them uh, and, and other operations for matching text. Uh, the, second, the, the, the second difference For bucketing, like you said, using the Lucene Facet API, which I believe Atlas Search is the only product on the market that exposes the Lucene Facet API as it is today. And it has several optimizations. There are low level optimizations for categorizing documents based on text. Now, if you move away from those specific, those are like kind of in the weeds. Uh, details. There's a host of other features that you get that are important for enriching your experience. So maybe that's highlighting uh, the fields or the, 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 the segment that matches a query. Uh, autocomplete, which is a feature I hope to show you today. Uh, all sorts of analysis, tokenization, uh, word segmentation for different languages. Uh, and so there are a ton of features, synonyms, right? Mapping one feature, one word to another word in case people speak about something differently than how it's indexed. Mon MongoDB is a database and I say, obviously, right? I say uh, database is for when you know what you're looking for. And a search engine is when you're open to suggestions. And so, we're not only used for a search box, people also use Atlas Search to power personalization pipelines uh, and applications. There's another question in the audience. Thank you. Um, yes, I wanted to ask whether, sort of how do the features of Atlas Search compare with Elasticsearch in particular? For example, can you do uh, Asian characters and file indexing in Atlas Search? Yeah, it, it's a great question. Um, and this was a, one of the key uh, initiatives for me when I joined the company is like we have to really get the most out of Lucene. I spent a long time in the Apache Lucene community. I've contributed to all, all the open source 
uh, search engines and especially solar and Lucene, but like we added last, last fall and early this year, we added the, we already had CJK, which is sort of Chinese, Japanese, Korean, uh, but the way it segments some text in those languages is not ideal for the others, right? So you make some trade-offs to just have one analyzer. We added the Nori analyzer for Korean, specifically Lucene.nori, uh, Kurimoji for uh, Japanese, Kurimoji, and then we added the Smart Chinese analyzer, uh, which is great for traditional Chinese, simplified, I think it even works with Pinyin. And so that's really important for us. Now, when you talk about What's the difference between these uh, two systems, Elasticsearch and, and Atlas Search? So many things, right? First of all, at Elasticsearch was built in 2010, and Lucene was in a different place in 2010 than it is today. And so Atlas Search is built on the next generation of Lucene and, and brings in features like near real time replication and uses finite state tra transducers for synonyms. So in Elasticsearch, you create a synonym, you make a change to your synonyms file, synonyms mappings, you have to re-index. And there's some optimizations there that's great. But when you talk about multi-word multi synonyms, or if you're talking about automated synonyms collections based on query signals, right, which is what we all want to do, we don't want to manually manage our synonyms forever, we get those benefits and Atlas Search. You can also specify read-only nodes, right? And the way that Elasticsearch is architected, that's not possible. Every node's a query node, every node's a, an indexing node. They can't separate them. And, but I don't want to say anything bad about that company. Like, I built a company on MongoDB and Elasticsearch, and I didn't pay either of them a dime. <laughs> and it was very, you know, it was very good. But eventually, I, you have to. I didn't get to that point. Uh, we're not competing with them, really. Elasticsearch is focused on logs, observability, security. Focused on application data, the data you're already storing in MongoDB, most likely. And you'd benefit tremendously from a productivity standpoint and a feature standpoint to use Atlas Search. I think there was a question on there. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. I have two parts to my question. Uh, one is, what's the, um, I I if you could speak into the level, level of effort to convert an existing Elasticsearch workload into a Mongo Atlas search workload, what, um, what, what level of effort or, or how, how would I even go about it? Secondly, uh, I have some denormalized uh, documents uh, r rather normalized documents in my existing database that I need to search together. Um, so like a user's order type of search relationship. Does that capability exist in, in Atlas Search? Yeah, so uh, to, to your two questions. The, f the first question, effort. You know, our, our customers, they say various things. Some, some CTOs, and these are fast growing companies, they're like, hey, we, or big companies already, we're like, hey, we were able to compound and Atlas search. I mean, the query looks so similar. We we're a little simpler. It's like it was really straightforward. The index definitions compared to the field mappings and Elasticsearch were similar. We have the same analyzers. We even specify Lucene.English or Lucene.Spanish. So they found it to be pretty straightforward. I, they didn't give have one, one customer in a financial services has to quantify their development velocity. And today they say it's between 30 and 50% more productive uh, than they were before they adopted Atlas Search. Now, now the, the level of effort for him to stand up Atlas Search is about two weeks. Uh, that was getting the, like familiarize himself with the query API, getting his index definitions where he wanted them to be. I don't think that's going to be most people. I think it's going to be more like one to two months to really, really understand. But everybody's different. And it's also about your familiarity with the other systems that you're coming from. Now, the second thing, you sort of asked about a join. Like, 
There, there's two ways to accomplish that in Atlas Search today, but there will be four soon. So one way is as long as search is the first stage in your aggregation pipeline, you're good for most of the other stages to be what you want, unless they also dictate that they need to be first. And so you can run a query on the, on the search index, that collection, and then another query on the collection that you need to demonstrate the relationship between orders. Now, if you ask Mark or you ask me, I'd tell you put them both in the same collection. And I, I know it's it, coming from, like if, you, it, if you're like me, I was working with relational databases for a long time before I ever touched the document database. And it seems counterintuitive. Orders and users in the same place, yes, they can go to, together. And, and um, if, you, if you can't do that, what you can do is use the dollar merge uh, stage in a, in a database trigger such that you create a materialized view. Is, I think that's new in 4.2. A materialized view for every time there's a document added to either the orders collection or the user's collection, and you can keep them in sync. Uh, or you can, you can also schedule it alternatively. If you want to schedule it every five minutes or every 10 minutes, if insert is not necessary. Does that answer the question? There's another question over here. Yeah, hi. Um, to what extent um, is Atlas Search working alongside traditional Mongo queries? So we're actually, we're using the kind of the old style uh, Mongo text indexing system because we have one arbitrary field in our collection that is text we like to search. Um, and so with that, we can very easily mix queries between traditional fields and text fields. How does that then translate in the context of Atlas search? Is it effectively the whole thing doubled up again in the Lucene index? Where it, does it divide it, and conquer? It's only going to be that one field. So only the one field that you want to be searchable will be in the Lucene index. And and all the object IDs mapping to the corresponding documents for that field. That's it. Uh, no duplication of the whole collection. And you'll see a, a, like improved performance, like I said, a host of other features. You, you could make it 20 fields and filter on 20 fields, right, from a single collection. So yeah, you only need one field, it's fine. As a question came in through the app, uh, while we pass the microphone. Is it possible to test, Marcus, is it possible to test Atlas Search locally? It seems it's only available in the Atlas console. Yeah, today it's only available in the Atlas console. That's, that's for a lot of reasons. There are ways to make local development feel more natural. I recommend checking out the Realm CLI and just creating a simple API there. And, and we're working on a first class developer experience, but because we only have a single deployment target, which is Atlas, we're able to move forward, I mean, faster and deliver features to the market at a rate that outpaces the competition. Sort of like why we want you to come to Atlas so you can do that in your own businesses. In the future, that could change. Yeah. Hi. Uh, just a quick question regarding um, uh, performance in Atlas search versus you know, uh, regular uh, queries and aggregations. So if you're doing a regex search on a text field that has, you know, in a collection that has a million documents, what's the performance gain or improvements over? So it, it depends on what the, what the whole query looks like. So we released today uh, an announcement and public preview, our Lucene Facets API. And we saw that for, for Facet queries, Facet counts that appear after a search were 100 times faster. Two orders of magnitude. That's not an exaggeration. It's a little bit more than 100. And so if that gives you some idea, I mean, we're, it's important to know we're not the transactional system. We're not MongoDB. We're not the store of record. We're fast, and that's the focus, and lightweight. And, and so every, every query is not going to be like that, but a lot of them are. Uh, and it's really important to take that strain off your database, that regular expression, those greedy quantifiers. I mean, we all learned in uni that that could be problematic from a compute standpoint. Hi, yeah, so slightly extended question from the first one, which is about the Elastic versus Atlas Search feature difference. Now, narrowing 
just on the search features, excluding, let's say, application data can exist in either Elastic or in search, so it's not that as a factor, but just from uh, search as a uh, feature set, what's the, the kind of delta and what's the gap between Elastic and uh, yeah. Elastic? I would say there's a few, there's a couple features, there's probably two features that I would say we don't have that they have that are really useful for the application search use case. Uh, and the reason why is because we feel like we can build them a better way. Uh, now, the other features, like we talked about synonyms, you can change synonyms and not re-index with us. And it also exists as a MongoDB collection, right? Uh, because of that, that finite state transducer I talked about. Also, the Lucene facets are not the elastic search aggregations. They went and built their own aggregation framework, probably modeled off of our name, <laughs> and, and started working they diverged from Lucene at one point, but they didn't keep up. Lucene went in a different direction, laser focused on application search, and their performance is far great. Lucene's performance is far greater. Atlas Search's performance is greater in those areas. We're not building, it's really important that when people look at us as you know, two Lucene-based systems, they're really different implementations, and we're on a different, a later Lucene. Now, the, the, the area where I'll call out we don't support publicly yet is uh, dense vectors. And that's because if you look at the, the history of Elasticsearch, they were sparse vectors, then dense vectors, experimental, then, then uh, SSPL modeled off us, or EPL, which is SSPL plus, and then paid features, XPAC. Like, we're not gonna do any of that. We, and we want to use dense vectors in a robust fashion. Dense, they, they landed in Lucene 8, about, I think, December of 2019, but Lucene 9 wasn't released until last week. And so we're waiting for the whole community, these heavyweights, to work with us and, and collaborate in public on what's safe for users. We also felt like most MongoDB users, to really get the domain-specific language models built and trained, it was cost prohibitive. And I think still today it's pretty pricey, but we're going to make sure that we help you down the path of building uh, search and vector space in the future. You know, today a, a, lot of, a lot of the tests suggest that BM25 is the leader still. So you'll see a lot of marketing features for, from folks from us. It's gonna be what works and what drives value for your business. And I think that's a great place to end the session. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you to the audience for bearing with us through the technical difficulties. Uh, if you're back in this room, we're going to be working over the lunch break to get that going, but you should go get uh, some lunch. Uh, I think, I hope it's been a valuable conversation anyway. Keep your headsets with you. Remember to switch colors if you change rooms. I, I will demo what I was going to show you here at the product booth multiple times in this afternoon because it's really cool. I want people to see it, and we're not building yet another Elastic Search. This is very different. It's sweet. And the fastest growing companies in several industries are all using Atlas Search, and it's no surprise. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you all.